everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to do a little painting with some butterflies. And um, so I've got my setup here and I just want to talk first of all a little bit about the colours that I'm going to use. Um, and also about how I came uh, to come upon this, this design. This is what we're going to paint and um, we're going to put a, a butterfly in the middle and then we're going to surround the butterfly with a kind of garland of uh, flowers and uh, small butterflies which are going to sit um, around the outside edge like that. And um, this design uh, evolved. What I did was I found in a magazine, I found um, some pages with butterflies on. This is an old magazine. I think it goes back to about, well, it says here 2004, but it has some nice paintings of um, realistic paintings of butterflies. So I, I, first of all, I did some paintings of them to try them out. These are my first ones, my exploratory paintings, which I think I showed you a little while ago. And then I was, I left it for a bit to think about it. Um, then I made some photocopies of the pictures and I've got them here and I started to play around with arranging them on a page and I thought I would do a whole uh, page of about half a dozen of them or so but then I changed my mind and I decided to focus on, on one butterfly in the middle and surround um, him or her with, with what I just uh, described. So for this painting I'm only going to use probably two colours and those two colours that I'm going to use are going to be um, quinacridone gold, which is my um, go-to uh, yellow, which I honestly think everybody should have in their palette because it's such a good mixer. And I'm going to be experimenting today and showing you how it works with French ultramarine. Um, I usually use cobalt blue, which is this colour, um, which is a fresh, very attractive blue and it makes lovely bright greens with uh, quinacridone gold. So that is a really useful colour. I think those two are probably my favourites, but we can't always paint in the same colours, can we? So I have a tube of French ultramarine, which is slightly different from ordinary ultramarine. Um, it really isn't very different. That's French ultramarine, and this is um, ultramarine deep and uh, I don't know if you can see a difference there I think the French ultramarine is you could say brighter um, so that's what we're going to use today I think the ordinary ultramarine is really good for skies especially if you use it with yellow ochre um, but for what I want to do today I think the French ultramarine is going to be better so um, this is my paper. This is um, 90 pound watercolour paper, which is stretched onto a board. And because I'm going to be doing this kind of a design, I'm using the idea of having the butterflies cut out so that I can position them and um, do my design. So I'm going to do the sketch and then I will come back to you and we'll start with the painting. Okay, so I've done the sketch and um, I'll make this available for you to download from, from our website at dianeanton.com and I'll put a link uh, direct to that sketch in the, in the um, description below the video. So if you go to the description below the video where it either says see more or read more, I can't remember which, or there's a little downward arrow if you're on a um, mobile device, then you can see not only uh, things like the links that we've got, but also a little bit of information about the materials I used in this painting or any painting that we do, plus um, uh, links to Amazon and to Jackson's if you want to actually buy something as well, and the tip jar too. So anyway, so that's where you can find this. This is my basic outline. 
don't know how it's going to go. Um, so if we have to come in with ink at the end, we'll use our Stettler pigment liner and give it some more structure. It depends how it works out. Not quite sure yet what's going to happen, but in order to try to predict a bit better, I'm going to, as I say, a limited palette, very limited palette, two colors today. That's all we're going to use. So it's going to be very muted and very low key, or as they say in the artistic world, high key, which is the opposite to what you think it would mean, because that just means not much contrast, not much color. Anyway, so I've just tried out a few blends here. So this is the Ultramarine, French Ultramarine Neat, and uh, that's dropped in wet in wet to see how that was going to spread for the wings of the butterfly. Good idea to try that first. This is the green we're going to be using, which is quinacridone gold mixed with French ultramarine. So it's a very muted, soft green. And the yellow is also obviously, this is the pure quinacridone, so that's going to be quite muted as well. So we're going to see how, how that goes. And um, yes, so let's get started. I'm going to move my water first of all, because it's in the wrong place over there. Okay, so um, I think I'll start with um, the flowers. So I'll wet a little bit um, the flowers there, and then I'm going to pick up some quite strong quinacridone gold and just drop that in, leaving the paint to basically do the work. Sometimes I like to uh, wet the paper first. Sometimes I just go ahead and paint straight in and uh, keep my fingers crossed. So then we're going to take some blue and I'm just going to put it at the base there and I'm going to hope that it's going to um, meld, mix and mingle a little bit with the gold. We'll see how that goes. I mean, this is really like most painting, I mean, you don't really, really want to know what's going to happen, do you? Um, before you start. And um, so this is a completely off the cuff. Painting, so you're seeing me create and get frustrated with my chair um, feather to do a little bit of vein in there. Now the question is, uh, do, do we carry on with all the leaves or do we do um, butterflies and leaves alternately as we go along? And I'm thinking probably I'll do the leaves first. And that way they'll all be more or less the same color. That is to say, uh, not the same color, but, uh, oh, you know what I mean. Saves wasting paint as well. People have been asking about brushes and the softness and hardness, springiness and so on. And I didn't realize until people started asking that question, how much difference there was with my own brushes. And uh, I think you just tend to adapt what you're doing. You just tend to adjust a little bit as you go along. Okay, I'm going to uh, do some more of the flowers. My pencil lines are really just a guideline. They're not really meant to be followed slavishly, but they are helpful. So we'll do the same here as I did on the other side, making a good contrast 
into the little buds. Just a little bit of paint. Remember, we're only using two colours. So this is helpful if you're trying to, uh, what's the word, conquer your palette by learning what it can do. And I've put those buds on the wrong side, so I'm going to just go ahead and put them back where they should be on the other side. And in a minute, I'll come through and rub out the wrong line if necessary. Yeah, because two colours can make an awful lot of mixtures, especially if one of them is a, is, is a blend, like quinacridone gold is a little bit um, reddish, isn't it? It's on the red side of yellow. So it's almost like having three colours. I was thinking about um, one of the old artists from during the war, a German artist called Emil Nolder, and he um, was um, a bit of a rebel and he was in hiding from the Nazis during the war. And they, he was unable, because he was an artist and he was a bit rebellious. They didn't like what he was painting for some reason. He was supposed to be painting things that supported the Reich and he wouldn't do that. So he had to go into hiding. And while he was in hiding, he um, didn't have any materials to speak of and he was painting with everything he could lay his hands on. You know, uh, bits of charcoal from the fire or um, lumps of uh, candle wax that were mixed with ground up um, pigments that he found in the garden and all, all sorts of things. Um, and I was thinking how, you know, if you, uh, how spoilt we are basically, how spoilt we are. We have so much and we don't use it fully. You know, somebody like him, he would have absolutely been completely overwhelmed by the things that we have nowadays. The choices, too many choices, too many colours. Nobody needs 364 different colours of paint. And... Emil Nolder produced masterpiece, masterpieces with his charcoal and pigments from the garden. The other one is that lady, that Canadian painter, I can't remember her name, she was one of the friends of the, of the group of seven and she started painting, I think, when she was quite um, mature, probably about my age, and she couldn't afford to buy canvases, so she painted on cardboard. Okay, so I've wet the butterfly in the middle and I'm trying not to think about it too much because I'm going to drop paint into the corners and pray that the gods are with me. And notice how I'm doing that. I'm just dabbing, going boop, 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 
like that and building up a sort of reservoir, not stroking the paint out, but dropping, literally plopping it in. And then the weight of the pigment, the paint, forces itself into the water, which is on the paper. And I'm going to put some blobs down here. And then what you can do, well, I'm going to leave that to run for a bit and I'm going to go into the other butterflies up here. And I'm just going to do them really loosely. Or that one rather. And um, this one down here, I think we might make it him a little bit on the greenish side. This is undercoat. Imaginary, imaginary, you know. And just drop something in for his tips. Like that. And, and his body. And this one needs a body as well. And this one, no, we're not going to make them yellow because um, obviously the flowers are yellow, so we don't want to confuse anybody. The green is about as far as we want to go in that direction. So we'll call this one a small blue and we'll drop in his body. With any luck, that will bleed out into the wings. We'll give him some tips. And I'll just do the other one up the top there. Oh, the sun's come out. And pop in the body and some tips. So now I'm going to come back to the big one in the middle and it's got eyes and a body so we'll just roughly paint that in over where I draw on it I'll do his antennae later then I'm going to use a sharp object what shall I use I have been finding these feathers Quite good but I think I might use a stick and hopefully just draw some lines in Okay, so that now we need to let it dry. Okay, so this is completely dry now and I've um, removed all of the pencil lines that uh, were no longer necessary. And I'm just going to um, put in the antennae for this one using a 0.05 pigment liner and then I'm going to just um, redraw the outside edge of the wing 
of this one because um, it needs a little bit of definition there. Not solid lines, just because this is a watercolour really, so. And I'm just going to reshape the body a little bit, a little bit of structure. There we are, that'll do for that. And if you wanted to, um, you could um, outline some of the places where the spots are. You could go, go, come in, I might do that in a minute, with a little bit of white. Um, but uh, first, let me see what else needs, uh, if anything needs touching up. Okay, of course, all of the antennae need to be put in on all of them and sort of perhaps a little bit of an indication of legs if you feel that way inclined, but I probably won't. Suddenly they look a lot more like butterflies when they've got their antennae, don't they? And you can, if you want, emphasize the veins on these a little bit. If you want to, you could, you know, you could play as much as you like with the wings and everything. You can do little pointy bits on the bottom, back edge like that. Loads of things that you can do, or you can just leave it as I'm going to do, kind of a little bit rough. Um, Yeah, so maybe we'll just uh, also put a little bit on here, on these buds. It looks a bit like, um, what is it, ja uh, no, not jasmine, so flower, oh, it doesn't matter, I can't remember. Okay, so you could put more things in here, we could put some spatter in there if you wanted to. Um, you could build up the number of leaves. I mean, if you think I don't have enough leaves, you could say, oh, maybe we should have another leaf here. And come in and put one in in a slightly different color. Maybe another one here. It's entirely open to all sorts of interpretations and developments. And that was just um, two, two colours. So the other thing that I think might be worth doing is perhaps a little bit of blue shadow underneath. Now this is a bit of a... a bit of a risky process because the idea is to give a bit of three-dimensionality so it looks as if it's casting a shadow underneath. Hopefully that will work. And then you could, you could, if you wanted to, I suppose, you could do it with any of them. Any or all of the butterflies. But I think I'll just do it with that one. Oh, yes, I was going to put a little bit more white on there, wasn't I? Um, white gouache. Because I think that the idea of a couple of white dots on there is a good one. And maybe one down here. Now I'm not going to do spatter. 
because I'm going to leave it up to you as to how you finish this off. So I think that would make a very nice gift, very nice card when you do it in your way and um, interpret it how you want. You can use lots of colours if you want, don't have to stick with the two that I used, Quinacridone Gold and French Ultramarine. But there we are, that's it for today. Thank you very much for being with me. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already and do leave a comment in the comments box below. We do read all the comments and I try to reply to all of them. Go to the website as well and to the Facebook group where you'll find lots of other kinds of support. There's lots of, on the Facebook group, um, there is a section called, it's called Learn to Paint Watercolour, our Facebook group, and it has a section called um, Guides. And in there we've grouped all of the different videos that uh, address certain common questions like which brushes to choose and which paper and which paint and so on and so forth. So you might find that interesting. So, okay, I will let you go and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye bye.